guess different market analysis. It's not going to be different in our approach to the market. However, the timing schedule of this public analysis is going to really segue or transition us through to this session, which will begin on Wednesday the 20th. Generally, I like to bring these video recordings out after the market close. I wasn't able to yesterday. So this is my second best attempt or most appropriate attempt um, than what I generally would do for you. So first of all, my apologies for that. I just wanted to make a couple of public statements as to you know, some of the candlesticks that we at least established yesterday during Tuesday session that may lead to a little bit of market weakness as we move into Wednesday. Now, this is the chart of the S&P 500. Yesterday, as at Tuesday, we have printed that of a hangman type of candlestick. And again, although we are definitively in a confirmed bullish uptrend, this is after the breakout here towards the late section of October, whereby we saw, saw all three markets break above their respective all-time highs. Since this period in time over here, if I can color coordinate this with my sort of green circle, since this period, the market is really in only sort of observed and moved in one direction. And that has been very firmly to the upside. If you just have a look at the candlestick colors, there really aren't all that many dark candles. I mean, it's just been uh, one-sided in terms of whites engulfing, or at least white real body candlesticks. And when you see these types of candlesticks in a trend, I just wanted to make the point that we're not talking about the trend reversing itself, but it does make sense that we could see a little bit of market weakness. The reason I say this is because since this little transition here, this is going back to Thursday and also Friday last week, again, surprise, surprise, we've established another open window and very similar to past gaps, okay? Uh, generally, we will see these close. Now, not all gaps need to close. I hope you are very much so aware of that. However, in this context, after the run-up that we have seen since that October breakout, it makes sense to see the markets actually pull on back down a little bit. So this is a, essentially a little bit of a warning to say that, look, as we move into Wednesday session, if we do see the markets pull on back down, I wouldn't be all that concerned. It makes a lot of sense that we're going to close this gap over here. Very similar to what we did after we saw this gap between these two sessions over here. This looks like it's Monday the 4th and also Friday the 1st of this month. What happened on Wednesday the 6th? We closed that open window and we continued to the upside. So it looks to me that we may be very early on in the process of repeating that same pattern. However, when I show you this on the exponential moving averages, you can see very firmly that we are still trending. And although the markets themselves, this shouldn't surprise anyone, Although the markets are, again, overextended, they are very much so overbought, it makes a lot of sense that we can still push on up to roughly 3,175 points on the S&P 500 before we see that major breather in the market itself, i.e. a larger, sort of deeper correction. At the moment, as it stands, all right, we're just sort of moving with the candlesticks that have established on Tuesday. If we have a look also at the ADX and the CCI, they are really pushing their extremes. Historically speaking, there is a little bit of leeway, so to speak, in the ADX on the on the S&P 500. The ADX can sort of, sorry, the CCI can linger up here indefinitely. But I just wanted to remind you that if we were to see a pullback, right, obviously bearish sentiment is going to begin to spike. And you're going to hear all sorts of narratives as to the beginning of potentially a deeper and larger correction. At this particular juncture, as I sit down prior to the market opening on Wednesday, I just wanted to reaffirm, or at least please plead with you, so to speak, not to buy into that tendency of that the sky is falling. We've gone through a tremendous run up. It makes sense to see a pullback back down to close that window on the S&P 500, or at least to see some of these exponential moving averages retested as new areas of rising support, whether or not that's the 10 or the 20 exponential moving average. But at the moment, again, it's a little bit of a slight warning just to say, look, the trend is your friend. The trend is still very much to the upside. We've broken above resistance. We've potentially got a larger back test at a later date, but for all sort of reasoning at the moment, okay, this is nothing more than potentially a little bit of a shallow correction. On the NASDAQ, again, the difference between Friday as of last week, which was, sorry, Thursday as of last week, the 14th, and then Friday session, we tried to actually retest this on Monday with this lower week just here. We were not able to do that. We got the gap up again as at Tuesday. We couldn't really generate any sort of follow through with yesterday's candle. We still have this target up here at 8,900. However, if I zoom back on into the detail, what's glaringly obvious once again 
is that we still have these open windows. And very similar to this little pattern over here or this period that I just described and illustrated for you on the S&P 500, we came on back down soon after, we closed the window, we continued to build that stair step upon which we've only just broken out of again. So it seems as though the patterns themselves of psychology are essentially repeating or at least they are set up to repeat. We'll see what happens on Wednesday, but I just wanted to put this out there to squash any concerns or any fears that you may have in the event that the market does pull down. Now, again, going back into our list of shares, 256, 261 on Apple. This is just continuing to trend even in the face of a downward day yesterday, 81 cents it closed. Amazon is still lingering. In fact, on Monday, we produced, or at least Amazon produced, a pretty interesting candlestick right around this secondary neckline. You've heard me speak about this double inverse head and shoulders pattern. Okay, you've got the left shoulder, two little... um sort of essential left shoulders there, you've got the inverse head and then you've got one and now a second right now. So what I've been saying to people in email format, people have been emailing me about Amazon is that it would be very interesting, just placing a little bit of a hypothetical here, that if we were to see a little bit of market weakness, the markets pull down, and then if we were to see Amazon show a little bit of strength, this is just essentially setting up or at least confirming that of our initial suspicions that of a turn in price to move back on up to 1,972 when the markets continue in their bullish trend. So be mindful of that on Amazon. We've got Boeing Airlines still holding up above the most recent bullish entry at $360, uh, sorry, $362 per share. We've got Baidu, which is still not broken above this bull flag. I'm going to adjust this ever so slightly to above this candlestick now that we've established that of um, yesterday's candle, another sort of engulfing candlestick. 120.04 is a new bullish entry. Look for a break of this when the markets turn up and continue to trend. We've got Caterpillar largely just moving sideways. It's sort of just marking time at the moment. It's taking a little, of a little bit of a breather. And by the way, for a bunch of these shares that have most recently moved bullish, what they're doing is they're coming back down to retest those rising exponential moving averages. COP is another. Yes, we have, or at least we're sitting on the 50, but we're also very close to this rising trend line as well, which is very interesting. We saw Disney last week go parabolic. It's sort of just holding in there at the moment. 140, sorry, 140.42 was that first entry. We have a secondary re-entry re here based on a bull flag pattern at 147.63. So we'll just monitor that. Google again is just setting up a continuation of stair step patterns. If you wanted to draw rectangular boxes, you can see how that's following or at least tracking with it. And it's also following along very nicely with the rising exponential moving averages as well. We've got IBM, which is nearing the apex of this symmetrical triangle. We hope to see this hold above that of this support area and this sort of, at least the, the support structure of that symmetrical triangle. So again, remain focused on that. Microsoft has been a great share. You can see it just trending. It's breaking out above 152.56, above 146.31. We're up here at 150 at the moment. So again, just prepare, be prepared, pardon me, for these pullbacks back into these rising exponential moving averages upon which some of those oscillators will be allowed to reset. And that's when you'll start to stabilize and then set the platform for that next push higher. Also, in addition to this, the final stock is Netflix. Netflix has seen that breakout, okay? Monday, we got it. This is above 295.06. We'll see whether or not this has legs, but once we definitively close above 309, we're looking at this running up to 361, okay? So again, a little bit of a different video recording here. This is as we move into Wednesday session and we'll see how it all plays out. All the best, everyone. If you have any questions, email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Okay, otherwise I'll see you in due course. Farewell.